This is Twit. Oh, you wanted to talk about the $20,000 pickup. Oh, I just thought it was interesting. So um, this is one way to get around tariffs by uh, something made in the U.S., like this $20,000 pickup truck. I, I I saw the article for it, and I saw some people speaking like, yes, if I needed something, that's exactly what I would get. And I was reading it, and I was, and I came away from the article really rooting for their success, Yeah, where one of the things they're basically talking about and kind of getting back to our conversation about bundling is that cars have gotten gratuitously overcomplicated and you really, the function of what you need is not that significant. You need something that goes fuel with fuel efficiency and safety. And this has enough modularity to it that everything that you want to have your vehicle do on top of that, you can still have that happen, but you can pick the stuff that you want and you can do it a lot more via aftermarket things. You can do it yourself um, that you don't have. And you, and in that article, they talk about like from the founders talking about like the car companies keep ramming so much down your throat. I think they call it as the curation of what you get when you buy a oh, car. Is my like BMW initially, they wanted to rent you seat warmers like it's built in, but you had to pay a monthly fee to use them. Well, Fortunately, there was too. such, there were such complaints that they abandon that but it is the case that as soon as you go in you're getting upsold but you want the better stereo right you want the leather seats right well, you want the just, paddle shifters not right? just the upselling it's also that um what they were talking about is like you'd get these combination let's say you want like the the shiniest and the premiest of all of it and um it's like yeah you get it in two colors because like the way it's curated, if you want that package, then you can get this one with these two things. And like, you're still not getting the choice that you want to have. Whereas if you start with just sort of the basics, you've got the chassis of the vehicle, it's got the wheels, it's got the engine. Now you can add things to it to make it the car that you really Don't worry need. about the color. It's not painted. <laughs> and so they're, they're thinking that basically that's going to make financial sense. You can still have a pretty one. You just get, you achieve your prettiness, not by paint. You would, and because you the, the Verge something. article, yeah, you yeah. wrap it. Cause they were also yeah. talking about in the Verge article that um, building a paint factory, like one of the reasons the cost. Oh, the paint shop's is, very expensive in the assembly right, line. To build exactly. a paint factory. That's why the cyber truck cost. is un, is unpainted. <laughs> right. So what they're talking about is, Does and then work. there's also talking about how the factories themselves are, can be much, much smaller buildings, like much easier and cheaper to build the factories because the, they don't do um, the steel. They don't, I don't follow this completely, but like the way the metal works in a normal car, they're not using that, that material where they don't need to. And the material they are using, you can use a much smaller footprint that doesn't need to have such a big factory in order they're to molded it. of plastic <laughs> yeah and i was wondering about that they said they're passing all the crash uh test things but injection they're also molded in the polypropylene composite material which makes them more durable and scratch resistant so it maybe you don't need to paint that um yeah. and the they're saying uh, saturn did that remember the saturn. saturns had plastic yeah. panels yeah yeah so there's a whole bunch of things where like if we just break down a car to what we basically need. It's basic simplicity. It's going to be a lot cheaper to produce and you can still end up with something fancy if you want, but you'll you know where they're fancy smart. Uh, they don't have an, a radio or stereo or entertainment system. They just have a place for you to put your phone. It's all people need, right? Like, these but days. really, isn't that right? I mean, yeah. and no one wants a touch screen either. So yeah, the <laughs> phone does everything I want it to do. It'd be nice if I could maybe, put a tablet there or something so i have a little more real well, they're estate talking about modularity so basically you can add a graphic screen if you want you can ah, add okay. bluetooth speakers so like everything because i was kind of like a car with no radio really like i remember my dad's car in 1981 like that was kind of annoying we didn't have a radio in it but um, it's electric we, uh, we survived and um and you know, you can add one and it's and it's also going to be like third party modularity is like a huge thing to to have in cars also yeah that's for, kind of interesting that's and, a kind of interesting idea i think and it's chinese like repair is built in like they basically will have that unless it's involving like a safety system or electrical or something like that you can do it yourself and we've got youtube videos for you to watch like they they really they they it's like what a car really should be and we've just gotten away from it because we've just put all this overtone on how we do cars i will also say one of the big things and this is still why i'll defend tesla a bit 
was they got rid of dealerships. Yes. Because dealerships Everybody are really the big, yeah. that's the big block to a lot of this stuff. Right. Like the reason why it's so hard to get these the upgrades you want and all that, it's because you have to go in, you have to negotiate. It's just a nightmare. I still, you know, I bought my Tesla in 2019. It was everything I wanted. I just went online, clicked I wanted it. Here's $200, gave them my old car, did the financing all within like 20 minutes pick the car I want, and I have to talk to a human being. And then I got a text message that the car was ready and I just went and picked it up and that was it. And it was just like, it goes to show you what you can do. It's even with software updates, right? They just go right to the car. But it's the automotive companies and the dealerships. I mean, if you guys remember, I'm sure Leo, you remember it, they tried to block Tesla sales in Texas. Because Absolutely. Because they didn't have a, you yeah. know, because of it, the dealership. In some states it's against the law to sell a car without a dealer. Wow. Yeah. Because the dealers went and lobbied the state legislatures saying, no, no, yeah, it would be un it would be unsafe. <laughs> <laughs> right. You shouldn't be able to do that. So I'm all for this. I mean, it reminds me, it's basically the PC model, right? If, you know, PCs came out and now look at like, especially for gaming, right? Like there's like 9,000 million accessories you can buy for a desktop PC. You can build them the way you want. You can have glass screens and all this LED stuff. It's all because of people came out with the format and then allowed innovation to happen through third party developers. And it's basically an open system. So I think this is great for cars. You know, yeah, you start off with the basic thing that you can afford. And this is also good for people who can't, they want a car, but they can't afford a $40,000 one, but they want one and they can build it out over time as they get more money. Like that's 27, cool five b before your rebate. And those rebates are scheduled to expire. So you, it may end up being more expensive. Uh, yeah. but I think this is one of the benefits of an electric vehicle. Cause basically they're golf carts and <laughs> you just put more, you want to put a, a Tesla is a golf cart with a fancy computer system mm -hmm. on it. Really? I, fi I figured that out when I got my first Tesla. I went, oh, you know, that's all it really is. It's really so no this, maintenance. And there's yeah, no maintenance. Tires. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they say they can make it safely. I liked your, before the show, we were talking a little bit about it, Daniel, and you said, this is going to create a a raft of third party businesses based on, yeah. it, should it be successful, based on upgrading this. The, the best selling vehicle in the United States by far is the Ford F-150 pickup. It's a big pickup, but people like yeah. trucks, right? They want they, a truck. They, they don't need them. But they I don't need them. Every, every day I see people with pickups. I'm like, why do you have a pickup? You don't yeah. need a pickup. I kind of want to. Yeah. It's for every once in a while you want to haul something, you know, a little larger. You want to take the sofa down to the dump or whatever. It's kind of nice to have one. It's good to have a friend with a pickup, I yeah. found. Yeah, you really only <laughs> need yeah, the friend true. with the truck. You don't need the truck itself. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, yeah. right, right. Hey, somebody's got to buy it. Your friend's got to buy it. <laughs> I mean, what's I, important though for a, the for this for this though is like the standards of the pieces need to be set so that if other other companies start making modular cars, all the pieces work for all the different cars. Wouldn't that be awesome? Then that they say, be, for instance, they happen. have an SUV upgrade <laughs> that's the that adds market. two that's seats. The PC market you're talking about though, Daniel. Like all the parts work together with yeah, all the sure. other companies. You know, they're they all compatibles. Work together. Yeah. yeah. So we need EV compatibles. Like PC compatibility. The only difference is, I would say, is the PC market, that functionality grew with the PC market. We're already talking about an existing market of huge car right. manufacturers. Big market, yeah. And you'd have to get them to all agree to step back, you know? So but if this was the first time we're talking about cars and like, oh, have you heard about getting a car? <laughs> I would say that, that, yeah, you'd have the chance here to uh, make that happen. But you know, now that you already have all these businesses, I think getting them all to agree on that would be, unless the government forced it, but, you know. Well, I, I, I mean, what's the evolution that will happen for this? So you've got this company that's going to take a leadership position. I think they're going to decide, given their ethos and also the economics, that is in their interest to have open standards for their cars because it'll help sell more cars and they'll still be first to market on cars that can take these standards. So I think they are actually, one of the things I really liked about it is I think they're betting the business on business choices that are actually much better for the public and the market. And I want that to succeed. Seed. I want that to be the market where we stop having everything being so monopolized and proprietary. So this is really exciting. And maybe with that company leadership, they will see it is in their interest to basically, you know, we've innovated it, but here's our open standard. So and we buried the lead on this a little bit. I did so intentionally. First of all, the name of the company, <laughs> Slate Truck, it's based in Michigan. And who's the primary investor? Jeff oh, Bezos. Bezos. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, so, it is a, the Amazon model a lot of ways. I bet you suddenly it gets it a lot Amazon. more interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, I, I would say Get a that prime delivery. Yeah. I, I mean, I would. I, oh, yeah. But I, I think it's not that I think that everything he does is smart. Um, you know, he's going to find a nut every so often. And, you know, I think this is a smart play. And, you know, I, I think there's a reason that like money is getting attracted to it, because if this succeeds, it's a path to success that's been underexploited. And if it can succeed, I think it's good for everybody. So Bezos hired a kind of a skunk works or built a kind of a skunk works in 2022 called rebuild manufacturing. Uh, and this came out of that skunk works. It was a, it was kind of a spinoff. Uh, but there are other, uh, uh, investors, including the owner of the Dodgers, and the CEO of Guggenheim Partners, Mark Walter, Thomas Tull, lead investor. Um, so it's it's an interesting idea. I wish them well. They have they've raised a lot of money. It's this is not just some guy in a in a garage who said, you know, I think I could build a cheap electric truck. This is an interesting play. And I'm sure, Bezos uh, would also like it because he can give uh, Elon Musk a bit of a uh, ribbing. Oh, he loves well. doing that. Since they're already competing, and yeah with the space stuff with now be yeah. the car market right but it goes to show you i mean you know for all of musk's you know issues <laughs> um you know tesla did significantly disrupt the car market and i think for the better there's still a lot that needs to be done but this is i give him a lot of direction. credit i don't i hate yeah. and i hate doing it but i give um, him a lot of credit sometimes uh, the things that we want to give him credit for were things that other people did and that he's taking the credit for so maybe and so, he certainly got a lot of federal funding to make it possible mm -hmm. but uh it, i think without tesla i don't know if you would have the ev boom uh, the first ev i bought right. was a tesla model x and I'll, I'll be honest this is back in 2015 before we really knew the full elon story i was kind of moved i was in tears i took a tour of the factory in fremont and i thought this is amazing this guy is uh is changing the world and they were built here in the united states which yeah was yeah unheard of. I, I think and that was a weird thing too because i was I just gonna say because oh sorry no i would just attribute it more to the bones of the company at the i think the reason where this falls down is when we think it's the cult of personality and that his personal yeah. playing in and his personal oh, of his, did this his and personal stuff. money and that wrote would the be check. the differentiation i'd make there's some yeah. really cool things with what tesla innovated without making it the cult of personality he put, to say he that put so, he, he put it he wrote the checks it's just like jeff bezos if slate truck becomes a thing jeff's going to take the lion's share of the credit even though he's done none of sure. the engineering and i think it's the same thing there, there is something to be said for the guy who puts up the the takes the risk and puts up the i money. think he was also a pretty good marketer though so like we can't take and he's a very good i mean oh nobody, yeah yeah Hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, The News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.